In today's video, we're going to be installing a standalone engine knock sensor onto a 1.8 turbo engine. The engine knock sensor ECU that we're going to be using is the Movichip KSC3. So I'm going to go through the, the wiring of the product and the setup of the product. So the wiring, first of all, we've got two sensors mounted to the cylinder head here. We've got one for the laptop so we can monitor the knock sensor signal with headphones. And the second knock sensor is going to be feeding the signal to our knock sensor ECU. The knock sensor ECU needs power, obviously, ground, 12 volt power. It needs an RPM signal, which we have run a patch harness to call pack one. And on this specific application, at least to start with, we're not going to be using the load function in the KSC3. So we have bridged that to a five volt uh, power source. And we've run it just quickly. We've run a LED into the car here and that will display a blue, orange or red uh, lead depending on how often the knock is happening and or how severe it is. Just going to mount the KSC3 underneath the air filter here. Once we're sure everything is up and running properly, we'll make this a bit more permanent, make it a bit tidier. That's the wiring. Let's have a check and see that it's all working properly. First step is to check that the wiring is correct. So we'll come to the KSC3 app and we'll connect to the unit and we'll come down and we're just going to click on test and this is going to give us our uh, RPM our live K sensor reading the signal that's coming from the knock sensor on the engine K thresh live we don't need that at the moment and we've got load which I've said I've plugged to a uh, 5 volt signal so we're not using that so the RPM live is not working so we need to come down to RPM calibration and tell the unit how many uh, ignition signals we're getting per revolution in this case it's a coil on pack we're getting one signal every two revolutions and we can see that we've got our RPM live at 800 which is absolutely bang on so the live case sensor is reading something let's give it a quick rev and we can see that the number goes up so from that and plus and plus we've got our ledge here which is uh, changing color so that says our lead is connected properly as well so that tells us that everything is wired up correctly. The next step is to get an idea of how the knock sensors that we fit into the engine are working, i.e. is the location good or not. Then we can move on to setting up our KSC3 app here to start detecting knock in real time. And when it does, it's going to illuminate this ledge here with either a blue, orange or red lead. So next step audio testing the uh, knock sensor location I've got the engine recording what you can hear in the background is the signal from the knock sensor which is getting recorded by the laptop four and a half thousand RPM five thousand RPM just do a quick second year pull up here So that was the audio recording of the knock sensor. What did it tell us? So the first thing is, I think the knock sensor location is fine, if not good. I thought the signal that we were hearing was very clean and, and good quality. So that's gonna work, in my opinion. And second of all, the there is a little bit of knock on the engine at a lower RPMs and higher loads. So that's gonna be something to bear in mind in the next step, which is gonna be programming the KSC3 to start registering knock. Now we know what we're dealing with regards to the knock sensor placement and we might be getting a little bit of knock low down and we also possibly on this engine might have a slightly loose chain tensioner. Bearing in mind all that I think we're ready to start putting the settings into the KSC3R knock sensor ECU. The bore on this engine is 81 millimeters so that suggests a uh, resonant knock frequency of 7 kilohertz. So to start off with I'm going to put in a, uh, a bottom frequency of 6.4 and a high frequency of 8 so between 6.4 and 8 kilohertz is where we're going to be measuring for the sound as a knock baseline calibration this is what we're going to do now we're going to set our baseline volume i.e. what is a normal volume for the engine between 1500 rpm and red line when the engine is not knocking when it's not knocking very important we come to our mid rpm red line rpm so I'm going to set the mid at 3000 rpm 
and the red line at five. You want a bit of a space between the engine red line and the red line RPM that we put in here. Knock frequency ID, because we don't have a way to advance or retard the ignition on this engine, we're just going to leave that off. We, we're not going to be using that. Uh, signal gain standard. I think for 99% of engines, it should be fine. Resolution, start at norm. And if you want to, try and do high later. But uh, norm, I think, is fine for most cases. Low threshold, I said we've um, eliminated that earlier. We're not going to be using that. And indication duration, i.e. how long the lead is on and how long the KSE would send to an external ECU. So we're sending that as three. So those are all our settings programmed in. What we need to do now is to do a baseline run to get our volume. So what you can hear in the background is the actual sound from the knock sensor. So we're going to be paying attention to that. When we do this run here, we definitely do not want it to be knocking at all. Otherwise, that's going to knock it, not going to give us an accurate baseline reading. Get it down to around 1500 RPM. And I'm just going to roll into it in the second gear. So we're going to press on there and now it's registering it. So I'm just going to roll into it gently, not full throttle, but just gradually get more and more into it. And we're going to take that up to 6,000 RPM, press off, preferably before we lift off the throttle. So it's given us 3, 11 and 15. And now I think the slightly loose chain tensioner is going to be affecting uh, that reading a little bit so maybe 11 is not is a little bit higher than what we'd want but to confirm that I'm just going to repeat the process again so that time is given us a 3 a 6 and a 17 so the 1600 RPM is very consistent, 4400 very consistent, the 2800 in the middle is a bit there or here and there, but I'm going to split the difference and I'm going to call it 8, I think the 1600 I'm going to call that 4, and then for 4400 I'm going to call that 16, 17, and then I'm going to call it a day, and basically that is it now set up. So whenever the frequency, whenever the engine detects a noise between 6.4 and 8, and the volume exceeds these levels at these RPMs, then that's going to illuminate the lead. And now to validate the settings, if you're driving on the road, just drive around and just look at the, um, the lead while you're listening to the uh, knock sensor signal and just see that if and when you hear knock from the knock sensor, that the, the lead is illuminating. If you're not, if you find that the response is not good or it seems to be not picking up knock, then the first port of call I would say is try dropping the volume one or two points. If that doesn't really give you the results that you want, put the volumes back to what they were and then adjust the frequency window that you're monitoring. I would increase the high levels for this specific application. We said eight, so maybe increase that to 8.8. .8. The principle is basically the same for any engine. An addendum to this video, that is the setup process of the KSC3 in theory. However, in practice, it may be different. And on that 1.8 turbo engine in this video, things were a bit different. When we were doing the setup process, we heard or realized that there's possibly an issue with the engine, um, possibly the valve tray. And that seemed to be happening in the frequency window of the knock. But this is the reality. If you, you know, you might encounter these things when you're setting up the KSC3 on your car, on your engine, or on the engine that you're working on, you may find unexpected things. That noise on that 1.8 turbo engine, there was absolutely no sign of it from the driver's seat or revving it from outside, and the engine seemed perfectly fine. It's gonna get looked at, and maybe we'll do a continuation video when everything is uh, confirmed as good. That KSC3 has been left on the engine, and at least it's uh, telling the driver when that noise is occurring, which I think is a definite plus point, uh, at least until we find out what it is. If you've got any questions on all this, feel free to leave a comment below, or you can uh, send us an email at Movichip. If you want to see more videos like this about this product, subscribe to the channel, go to Movichip, subscribe to our newsletter. Look after yourselves, and I'll see you again next time.